talking about your podcast, when you're talking about the work you've done in your foundation, etc. Mm. It's all linked to either telling someone's story, their voice, or assisting someone in a tough situation. Mm. So I'm curious to know where that urge for service came from from you. Um, there's some strange things people share online that you're like, that is problematic. Yeah. What are you saying? Yeah. Um, and so, or calling out bad behavior. It's weird how we'll say we always these clicks of men and you'll be like, yeah, this, that's how this guy is. Mm. This guy is harassing me and you're yeah. telling me that's how he is. this is this is his normal yeah. behavior. I think you've transcended from just using your audience and using your personality for, you know, um, obviously chasing bags, but also like to contribute positively to society. And that's mm. something that we at Mount Rock really want to, mm. to try and emulate. I want to know more about kind of how you've handled the question of sexual violence mm. and Mm. Even if it's like a cultural audit, and I don't know, this might get black, <laughs> I'll just say. No, I remember once being on, when I was on KISS, we had a conversation from a story where there was this kid in high school who had died. Mm. And he just didn't wake up. Like he went to bed yeah. and he just didn't wake up. Yeah. And he died. And then there was blunt force trauma to, the head. to, the, to his head. It's like, What? And he had just come back from the um, circumcision rite of passage. And then I was like, Connie, what happens? In the Remember me? Yeah. I'm a household of just girls. Right. Men don't understand these things. I've never had that conversation. I was like, Connie, what happens at these things? Like, yeah. why is, where is there blunt force trauma? And not to say it happens in all of them, but people were calling in. So some men were calling in and saying what they experienced, right? Wow. And they were saying, okay. For me, we were given, we were taken to the caves, like driven out, mm. out there. And then um, we were given food, a lot of food, and we were forced to eat. Even if you throw up, like keep eating, a man must mm. eat, I don't know how many such big portions. Mm. Then you're beaten. Mm. Then you're told, now no woman can tell you anything, even your mother. Now mm. don't even step into a kitchen. And yeah. they were saying all of these things. And again, I have to repeat, those were the callers who are coming in and that was their experience that's very valid even if that was not your exper experience in your rite of passage somebody else went mm, through this yeah. you know and i was like why are we surprised why are we surprised that we we are where we are at now yeah. we created yeah. this monster yeah. but then yeah. that's not how it works though i was like we created mm. 12 when you take somebody between the age of 11 and 15 those are the most formative yeah. years yeah but you don't tell them to rape someone look at this that's you don't but i feel like but you start a, it's a bit of a leap because yeah culturally at least from uh my community and I, like i said which there's an experience which is a bit traditional but that experience what we are taught is to protect and assist our women the reason why you're told taught to have a slightly distant relationship with people of the opposite sex is because you're meant to don't get too caught up in their affairs. Be there to assist and support. But don't, I don't know how I can explain it. There, you have to learn that there's a clear boundary between a man and a woman and there are certain roles that you have. And as much as there might be that toxicity, that initial, that rite of passage, that practice is not meant to antagonize men against women. It's meant to tell men that your role is to protect the woman, is to protect the community, is to protect society. So even violence, let's say um, in my community specifically, the Meru community, violence against w a woman is, it's outrageous. Like what happens is you're come for by the whole, your whole age sets. Yeah. Yeah, and you're ostracized. But, but then, that's, but yeah. that's one. But that's one. That's one. Yeah, but, that, but that's one. But then, it, like I said. But, it's, but, but you see, the reason the term rape culture was coined yeah. is because People studied and looked at communities and said, we don't just arrive yeah. at, at rape see, overnight. Okay. We take certain steps. Yeah. And if you have a rite of passage that is destructive, what you're ultimately saying is this person is not a being. They're, they're an object to be owned. Uh, no. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, and yeah, that's what mm, you're, mm, they're an object to mm, be owned, right? Yeah, if it's, if it's the toxic things that yeah, the guys yeah. were calling in and saying they yeah, went through. Perhaps it was the toxic things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but then, like, like I said, there's an adulteration. So I wonder like, when, if, if at age 11, 12, yeah. this is being put into your head. All right. Yeah. Do you want to tell me at age 22, from 50, God, you'll start seeing me as a human being. Yeah, but then that's the thing I'm saying. 
I don't think that it's unique. Like the thing I'm I'm very cautious of is I'm just talking about my experience. Yeah. Um, I don't know about other people's experience about like the traditional setting. But for me, I think what you're looking at is an, an is a li- really, really adulterated version of what should be happening. Because um, in certain instances, especially those traditional rites of passage, you're not taught to undermine women. You're not taught to see women as objects. But that is your experience. experience. That's what I'm saying. But you I'm, see what I mean? That's why, yeah, that's but why. But there are places, so what I normally call it is yeah. a cultural audit. Exactly. Because we can't actually, and I'm, I'm really... Um, like I'm actually very adamant about this okay, point and okay. I'll tell you why. One, we should not be surprised with the issues that we have now where it's one in three women. Yeah. That's a big problem. That's a huge problem. So yeah. we have to unpack and say, where did it start? Fair. You know what I mean? Mm. Secondly, when you do a cultural audit, you find some major issues, even in the expectations of men. Even when you say protector, provider, all of these things, what which are roles that are put forward mm-hmm. in patriarchy, they are unattainable mm-hmm. in this environment. Mm-hmm. And what is the result? Yeah. Men yeah. killing themselves, exactly. right? So we, in this country, yeah. last month, every day there was a reported suicide case and it was a man, Yeah. So right? Adele, so Adele, what are we saying? Are we... So wait, and then the third thing, uh-huh. when we do the cultural audit, I'm not against our culture. I think they're beautiful things, but I'm also like, guys, there are also some things that are not working. Yeah. Those stories that from the men who called in, I was like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Because it's not seeing you as a human, even you as a the suffering. boy going through it, it is not recognizing you as a human being. It's not seeing you as a full being, right? But also when you look at the culture, there's some, some things that are problematic. There are some cultures where the word for women is synonymous with the word for children. Wow. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. So like yeah. it's, it's yeah. and, and your experience, Oscar, may be good, but clearly if we're at one in three women, Basically, your experience is not but, but, the main but, but that's It's the not thing. happening but, across but, the board. But where I'm, going, where I'm going, Adele, is I agree. I'm not disagreeing. No, 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 I understand. Yeah. But I'm saying yeah. what we then need to say is what is working, what is not, is... I'm not saying scrap this rite of passage. I've not been through it. Yeah. Perhaps it does something for men. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. But I'm saying there were yeah. men who called in and said they went through harmful things. I'm also saying there's a child who died. In yeah. After coming from so clearly, there is a big problem there. So it's I think sometimes we get scared to look at them, to to evaluate how we've been doing things because we've been doing them over and over for women we don't have the luxury mm. not to because we're not living in like good times that's one secondly i think men also don't see that when we say we're fighting the patriarchy it benefits you it benefits men because these unattainable expectations for men mm. right now mm. That are stressing men. How do so, I, I, wait? Go, let me let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Oh, sorry. No, we've like it's okay. Just, Second, no, I, I like to let it. Again. <laughs> so here's here's where I see this cultural conversation, right? Mm. So okay, when there and this this spans across religion, this spans across society, yeah. it spans across cultures. When some when there's para- parameters put in place and there's structures put in place, the people that put those structures in place have looked at that as determinant as positive outcome, right? However, when you give that to a society or a group, like the cultural thing we're mentioning, not every boy that goes through that traditional thing is going to extract value. Mm-hmm. A lot of the time, that guy, the, the young boy, unfortunately died of trauma physically. Yeah. But a lot of guys carried trauma internally and carried on in life. And they're That's still how, going through it, yeah. Right, exactly. So as much as maybe in a scenario that you're trying to give like the the American community, we're trying to give them, you know, you're a man, you should be helping people. A lot of guys in that same environment will extract very different messages from that. Mm. They'll extract different experiences and you're going to have different results. So I think it's not very individualistic sometimes and that's where the problems lie because you could have the purest intentions, but even the the leaders that are now implementing this, maybe them, they've got trauma and they've brought it into this practice and they're passing that on. So I feel like when you're trying to like inform young men, it can't be with a blanket uh, structure. Yeah. And even with, that's why we have problems with religion. We don't talk about religion, but like a lot of the time it's because there's a blanket structure that doesn't allow for individuals to thrive within that structure. And yeah. when they don't, you question why and you're ostracized. And so, I like that mm. you've talked on who create, like who sat down and wrote 
the rules the rules or the curriculum right. you yeah. know yeah as being a woman i wonder i'm like were well, women at that table like, this is the problem because I you're who, the yeah. idea, like, because who, like, ah. who are you interacting with was, are you guys living on an I, island i was 100 i was 100 percent sure she'd but take it back when you said it i was like but it's there's there's a valid there's a valid point to it yeah but i feel like when you're trying when you're trying to tell men like young men how to coexist with women I don't think you can do that in a room without, full of men. Without, yeah, but like, wait, you see what I mean? Hold on, mm. hold on. Okay, let's go. Because okay. where you've taken it mm. is we've taken it to the, the one of the most controversial places, which is mm-hmm. cultural rites of passage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where I think, where I think, um, where I think the I agree, I agree substantially is that yes, I do agree that at that time, mm. um, during that time when these rules were being made, a lot of consideration wasn't made for the historical kind of evolution mm. yeah. that we're going through right Correct. now in society. Correct. And obviously the socioeconomic changes mm. and all that. But that being said, mm. I still think that it's also really dangerous to say. Mm. It's also really, really dangerous to say that certain cultural rites of passage mm. are not um, are harmful or... Mm to say that they are dangerous towards men because i personally went mm. through that track and the way me have turned out is quite okay because wait because the person who was con- <laughs> mm-hmm. yes. he likes- right, right, breathe <laughs> breathe because the the people who are conducting it in my mm. instance were people who are not like did not have that internalized trauma mm. and were people who when they came to teach me these things mm. were teaching me from the perspective of we are trying to teach you as a mm. young man to not mm. just be a young man but mm. a leader in your community mm. as somebody who can be able to understand this new world and this new perspective mm. using your education mm. our our job is to give you mm. your cultural identity and to tell you who you are and where you come from yeah. but not necessarily to enforce negative normative negative mm. norms uh, uh, and mm. negative perspectives mm. or, on women or attacking women it's just that thing for by the way re- realize like the way i was taught that thing um that you just mentioned about um, gender roles mm. um i wasn't taught that men can't go to the kitchen and so like that. that's very traditional what i was told was mm. realize that you're a man mm. and realize that as a man one day you will find a woman and start a family understand that it is your duty as a man to support and uplift that family whether in whether they are you know whether roles change culturally but to mm. you as a man from where you come from you have a responsibility to uplift and keep that family together understand your wife understand your mother mm. don't argue and get into petty arguments with them with getting violent no just understand who they are and mm. you know uplift and nurture that is your job as a man mm. and protect and when i say protect it doesn't mean physically protect it means like yeah. protection comes in the like okay i'll go back to that bag um one of the things you're taught i was taught was understand that then this was a question of love that love is like a a small bird don't hold it with both hands and crush it mm. Mm. cup it in your hand you see mm. understand that that is also a woman just put her like just cup and protect her keep her safe keep give her your warmth and your love that's something I'll start there so mm. it's not necessarily a bad thing it's just that a lot of people have adulterated these rites of passage yeah. and put their own Mm. So then Ideologies. that's the thing. So why yeah. that's why I, uh, so it's two things. Yeah. One that's why I say it's a cultural audit. Okay. So mm. you look at what is working and what is what not. Is not. Exactly. That's one. Yeah. Two it's very it's very dangerous yeah. to center your own, own experience, experience. Yeah. Mm. in an environment where there is clearly a problem, a problem. Okay. you know? So what if you want to center your experience then say this 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 worked for me. How then do we replicate this? That. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Because there is a problem. Okay. There is a big mm. problem, guys. <laughs> and it's on both sides. <laughs> and we are both hurting from mm. it, yeah. you know? Mm. And I I just fear that if we if we don't have like really honest conversations, mm. if men also don't relinquish power, mm. I understand it's hard because you've had privilege, you know? It's nice, it's delicious to not think about safety the way we think about it yeah, or yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. But we have to be honest and say this is working, this is not working. This is going to require you to sacrifice A B C D. There's a cost to it. This is going to require me to do A B C D. But what I'm saying is something is not working and we didn't arrive here by mistake. The, the parallel the parallel where I think we'll find middle ground here is let's take it out of 
culture. Yeah. Let's look at it in a practical, something that aligns with it, but practically. If we're talking about police, right? Yeah. We're not going to go down this rabbit hole, but let's look at an example. <laughs> yeah. Police, the very essence of the police is a beautiful thing. Let's protect our community. Mm. Let's look after people, the most vulnerable in the community. The let's do that, right? But what happens is you'll have a cohort of police officers and 2% will come in they'll pass the test and now when they're enforcing what they're supposed to which is a positive thing on the society you're going to get some brutality but then it kind of skews away from all the good that other people do mm. so there's definitely a place where it needs to exist and like i agree that culture is a beautiful thing but the, the problem is it doesn't account for the whole batch of people mm. that are enforcing it and that's where i think we're kind of dividing exactly. right because at the core the basis was the bird protect but someone else won't have your amazing mindset to say this is a gentle thing. They'll look at it like this is my bird. Yeah, You're not looking at yeah. it as in like. And they're probably going through the same nini with same you. Thing. They were yeah. in that cohort. This is, my, this, is, <laughs> this is my bird. This is my bird. Will... I will cook it. Yeah. I will steam it. I will stew it. So, and I, I actually don't think we are on two different sides. Yeah. I think yeah. if you can identify what has worked for you. Mm. How do you amplify it? Thank you. Exactly. No, no, if, sh- shake my hand. If, I think now we are together. If, but do if, not discredit but there still it. Needs no, to, do not, but, no, no, but, no. but there still needs to be a cultural <laughs> audit because something is not Agreed. working. Yeah. So, yeah. What, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what, what I'd like to say as we move on. <laughs> no. Eli is just like, no, 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 ding, 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 no. ding, ding. <laughs> Round 10. Um, I'm a Libra. This is my role. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Turn on the freestyle. So um, one thing I will say, just from the story you've told about your initiative, the story Mm -hmm. you've told about um, even Janet, is very ironic that you mentioned it because what I wanted to say is your proof of some conversations we've had just this season. Mm. One of the things we've been saying this season is that um, innovation comes from necessity. And it seems like that's exactly what happened with that Facebook group. So if people hear what we're saying, they're like, we've not seen examples. This is a perfect example. Yeah. Another thing that um, our mutual friend Janet said on our episode was that um, what is in your hand like right now to make change? And she said, somebody, you're literally like a manifestation of this. Somebody somewhere is feeling hurt and there's something wrong in society. And if they manage to make a move just based on that small feeling and amplify that, other people will follow. And that's Absolutely. exactly what you've done. Mm. So to have you sat in the middle to tell us this is actually incredible to like be in front of someone that's a manifestation of that. Mm. So what I want to know with all of that in mind and all the progress you've made in this initiative and everything you're doing in society is what is the society that you're trying to create? How does that look for you? Oh my God. There was this mm. tweet that went viral, mm. right? Mm. And I can't remember how it was structured, but mm. it was... Um, asking women what they would do if they knew they would be safe, Mm, right? And something like that, but it was Mm. in more poetic language. But the responses were like everyday things. Women were like, I prefer jogging in the night. So I would go for a jog. I prefer doing this. Like it was your basic everyday things. And I think for me, it's one, a society where women can be safe Mm. to live an entire and full life and that includes structures it includes safe houses it includes just amenities and things that can be able to ensure that women are safe the the institutions that are meant to ensure that for us to be working efficiently and not just Mm. for women in nairobi but Mm. like women across the board it doesn't matter if you're in a more rural area or more urban area across the board that's one and then the second thing is like for africans in general i just feel like like we're just so dope right correct correct. and then for so many years we've been told we are really not dope you know Mm -hmm. what i mean to control who we are just to put it in like the most blunt sentences ever that's really what was happening to be able to control us and to be able to you know, take advantage of all the wealth that we have on this continent. And I just wish we could one day wake up and miraculously just have this Pan-African energy across different African Mm -hmm. countries from those in the North Mm -hmm. where there's problematic things of like some not really identifying with the the continent 
right down to the south. And I think if there was more synergies within us, mm. if it was easier to travel, if it between us, if we could learn from each other's cultures, amplify that, still do the cultural audit. <laughs> if, <laughs> if, 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 if there was a way, I say that with love. <laughs> um, if there was, if there was a more, like a louder awakening mm. of Africans mm. and a louder acceptance of our strengths that we've been told for so many years are our weaknesses. Mm. If there was a less dependency on, on, on external countries and organizations, if there was leaders who actually believed these things I'm saying mm. and were not reliant on other countries. Like I wish... I wish we could we could have that. Mm. So it's women's safety and 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 it's Africans really coming into their identity and living their best mm. lives. Because the, then what does that birth? It births spaces like this. It mm. births spaces like legally clueless. Because then you're free to just create. Mm. You know, mm. you're free to create and to be your most raw and authentic African self mm. um, without feeling less than. And I just. I just, I, I wish, I like that thing really irritates me. Mm -hmm. Like the identity crisis that we're going through as Africans because of our past, because of what's been eroded, because of what's not working, even in present day. And I'm not only blaming the colonizer. We do have African leaders who are willing participants in the nonsense, right? Mm -hmm. Because every day you can see our potential. Mm. So for me, that that world is a safe world for women, and it's a world where Africans really come to their selves. I think we're yeah. on our way there, but like I wish it would happen faster. faster yeah. You know, yeah. this, you can see the passion of why yeah. the core of your podcast is African yeah. stories. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, like as you're talking, the slowness. I feel like yes. yes I want to. Yes, I want to start. I want to start tying things. Even me, I'm I feeling quite. Like, yes. I'm, I'm feeling quite clueless. <laughs> exactly. I want to re remove these <laughs> branded Western yes, shoes yes, yes. And, walk. and wear in sandals. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or just yes. wear like uh, uh, like made in Kenya yeah. stuff, yeah. guys, yeah. and you'll be cool. The the the, mm. the the thing that you've just said. Yeah, if you watch the episode we did with Antonio Sol, I said the same exact thing. Mm. Like my biggest the thing i learned most about most in south africa because this was the first time i was in a country that was african mm. other than kenya was i really really wish that there was a pan-african mindset towards yeah. how we create anything of value and as how we perceive each other mm. that that's that union of minds across africa because mm. i feel like you're right like there's a lot of flavor to how we do what we do and everything that we touch there's a lot of personality a lot of mm. storytelling yeah, sauce just yeah. sauce. There's just so much mm. sauce that you know? that's and you know it's a beautiful thing now that we're seeing the world starting to celebrate africa more because mm. only now are we really breaking free from the chains of colonialism and yeah. the chains of um mm. i'd say an educational an education system that has kind of demonized mm. everything that we've managed to mm. do and managed to achieve so hence why i'm very with culture but um it's called an uh, audit bro <laughs> even you guys as man talk <laughs> don't you sit audit. down and say hey yeah. bro this is not working anymore is, yeah, you yeah, do. I, I agree i agree i agree like i said uh, this is why i'm very <laughs> because i'm yeah. very big on culture and heritage um and the fact and i'm very cognizant of the fact that even the boundaries which we inhabit as african states are not real they're not ours they're not and ours. they're really they're really not that old yeah. exactly like <laughs> so tomorrow really morning old. you might find that if you if you really took an ancestry test as an african you might find that allah your mm. cousin is actually ethiopian mm. uh -huh, or congolese mm. or from south sudan mm. and us being this one large continent with so much potential i hope that as the youth also we can be able to like access that dream and that mm. vision that you have because i feel like we have time mm. yeah, yeah i wish i w i see it in my lifetime though I like think i'm just will. like crossing yeah. my fingers I, I and when will. i still have energy not when i'm like right. too tired to participate <laughs> yeah. ah, listen, you're quite yeah. energetic <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're writing poems shooting yeah. podcasts yeah. Uh, listen uh, you I have mean, a long oh, yeah. Yeah. The, i i think you as long as you see progress i think that's what you can ask for right you don't, yeah. don't want to see the end result you want to just see progress um so with the African context in mind, what we're talking about now, I want to know because you've been around uh, 
different African contents around the world. You've toured with your podcast. Mm. And the passion of speaking with means that you've clearly learned some lessons from being exposed. So like, what's the lesson you've learned from going to different countries, talking to different people, hearing different African stories? What's the one thing you've learned about this beautiful continent? Oh my goodness. Let me tell you the first, so we did a tour yeah. in August last year, we did a tour within Kenya. So we yeah. did four counties yeah. and then the first African country, because after that we did um, the Paris episode and then yeah. after that came Zimbabwe. And so I'm an emotional person. I cry very easily, yeah. but I literally was like balancing tears on our last day leaving Harare. Oh. And I've never had that experience. Like, so when you're leaving like Paris, you're just like, man, I didn't get to shop. So yeah. next time. Yeah. But this was like, um, I felt tethered. I've, yeah. I, 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 I've never felt I've never felt anything like that. Um, same as when I went to Ghana. It's, there's some energy that mm -hmm. connects hey, hey, with you. Because yeah. <laughs> you're getting scared. The soil. <laughs> See you, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. uh? Where is she very uh, yeah? I felt oh tethered. Um, yeah. It was, it was very, um, it was uniting in, 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 in it, like I felt connected actually. And then also I felt guilt as mm. an African. So like Zimbabwe, we read what has been said about Zimbabwe in the papers and whatever. And we believe that stuff. And most of the time it's like coming from like Western news outlets or even ours that could be ignorant about certain things. And you go there and it's very different from what you've read. Yes, are there economic issues? Of course, but which, I mean, even us, we are currently going through it economically. Yeah. Um, they've had their, their past and yes, these political issues or whatever, but which country doesn't have that across the board, not only on the continent. And I just felt guilt that as an African, I relied on Western um, outlets or sources to tell me about my continent yeah, and to tell me about um, a country that's that's on my continent and i like i ate that stuff up yeah. and i believed it yeah. and then when i go on ground and people are learning so many people were learning kiswahili in, in mm. their unis there mm. um the people are so kind everybody i interacted with so kind it's so beautiful if you've never been to victoria falls i pray that comes across your journey it's beautiful it's natural so there's like a white man who said he discovered it but i'm like there were communities living around Before, there they yeah. were probably washing their clothes loosely arrived. over there it's, a, it's a real name it's <laughs> and not then Victoria you have just Falls. decided yeah. hey by the way i've just discovered this thing but whatever yeah. that's a, a fight for another day mm. but like it's it's yes i am a hippie but it's spiritual it was mm. a very spiritual experience and for me it just expanded me all travel expands me, but this was on a different level as just trying to figure out, okay, what's my Jeez. what's yeah. my role here, guys? Like, yeah. even well, just yeah. on a personal yeah. level, not as the, oh, business plan. Where do you see yourself and legally clueless in yeah. 10 years? No, like just mm. me as, as a Kenyan woman, as an African woman. Okay, what's my role here? Mm. It got me thinking about names mm. Mm. and like... So me, I'm a Diambo, that's my Lua name. But I even felt like, yes, I'm a Diambo, bro. Oh. Like, <laughs> yeah. it means no, 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 you know? Mm. Um, it, it, was, it was expanding on a spiritual level. And I think the more we democratize access to knowledge, the more it's important for us to be able to read up about other African countries for ourselves and, and from... There are amazing podcasts from mm. Zimbabwe. There's one called Two Broke Twimbos. Mm. They talk about their country. You can learn about their country from them. Mm. You can learn, you know what I mean? Mm. So now what's my responsibility as this mm. <laughs> is to, okay, I need to hear 
about Zimbabwe from Zimbabweans. Yeah. I need to hear about Kenya from Kenyans. Mm -hmm. I need to hear about Tanzania from Tanzanians. Like I'm not trying to have a, a, mm -hmm. an agent in between who is sitting in, yeah. I don't know which continent, yeah. you know. Yeah. And and I think that's what it. I felt really guilty, and I think that was also part of where the emotion was coming from. Where I was just like, "Why we became one of those people? Like I didn't mm. even know. Like I was doing the thing that yeah. I hate, yeah. you know." Yeah. Um, so it expanded me like that. And travel expands you. Sorry, I can talk for ages, but keep talking. When well, you guys are editing, yeah. <laughs> Kazi Kwenu, you don't edit. You don't edit anything. <laughs> really. Yeah. Um, it expands, travel expands you. There's something about Nairobi, and I won't say Kenya because Kenya is beautiful. And Nairobi is beautiful. But there is an energy here that is very mediocre. And like, you feel, was that wrong? <laughs> no, no, go, go. Finish the point no, so we please. can understand <laughs> where this comes from. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, we're, and for our generation, maybe it's different for our parents' generation, but there's like a keeping up with the Joneses, there's a Where? lack of breaking out and 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 finding who you are. Mm -hmm. um, mediocre in terms of like just getting by. It's just vibes. You know what I mean? It's just mm. it's just we're just mm. we're just mm. existing. Mm. We're just going through everyday routine, mm. and mm. then we find things to fill up this routine with to look like this progress and. Mm. non-mediocre stuff but when you sit back you're just like are you really living a full life my friend or right. what exactly is happening here mm. Mm. and there's a lack of of drive and like mm. ambition you know that mm. raw ambition that doesn't mm. even like you know the economy is difficult and running a business here is difficult but there's an ambition that is like still focused on like mm. this is this is what i want to achieve this is what i want to do mm. i'm going to create this mm. you know what i mean i think in nairobi we feel like nairobi is the beginning and the end and maybe it happens across different cities because when you get familiar with the space but i find it very mediocre and when you travel you get expanded to realize that by the way the world is bigger than you mm. Mm. Wow. Kijua. like you're doing amazing things that's yeah. great yeah but this world is big, sis. And mm. like these other people yeah. doing some mm. even more amazing things. And that mm. shouldn't discourage you. It's like, wow, there's more to do? What? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go back home and re-strategize or let's learn the skill or whatever. Mm. And that's what travel does to for me, mm. um, which is what I love about it. It expands me. Mm. It's, I, I then stop settling for less from myself. Mm. And I understand that to honor myself, I have to keep expanding and I have to know there's a big world. There's so much life to live. There's so mm. much to innovate. There's so much to do mm. that I can't just, Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. yeah. That comes from that. I hear what you're saying because I've lived in different places and going to live in another place after that, you realize how small that last one was. So I think even when you're saying that about Nairobi, it's from a place of love. Like, guys, there's more, there's more. out there. And I think, yes, I, I'm actually with the sentiment of, yeah. even if you go out just outside, it doesn't have to leave the country, just go outside, just explore more. So I see, I see what you're saying. Which so is why it's like Nairobi. Of, mm. Like, even when we went on the mm. tour, mm. even going to Kisumu, which is mm. like on the mm. way to my shags, my shags is like mm. an hour from Kisumu in mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm. And like, Hey, where, where Obama is from? Yeah, man. Mm. Like, <laughs> that's how us guys yeah. are, yeah. bro. Uh -huh. That's how we roll over <laughs> really, there. Really, no, like, he's so far from yeah. me. <laughs> but, uh, but, like, you understand. Man, you're just like, where do we... Yeah. What are we doing? Mm. What are we really mm. doing? Why are we not breaking out of the mold? Mm. Why are we really living a full life? And, hey, maybe that routine is a full life for you. Who am I to, to come in and tell you it's not? But mm. I just feel like sometimes we just settle. Mm. Mm. There's there's an energy of like, it's the beginning and the end and we just settle mm. and we just settle. And man, life is not waiting. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And it kind of goes to the answer you were giving where you're saying that the one thing that you learned basically, I think is what, what you're saying is that um, you were guilty, you said you felt guilty for taking on the story that somebody else had given. Yeah. And there's an amazing TED talk called like the danger of one story. I'm sure yeah, you're familiar. That's yeah, the yeah. same feeling when you're speaking now. Um, so, yeah. so mm, did I you have thoughts? Did, and I've did thought, you, did you, and I've thought mm? about um, mm -hmm. 
what you've said about tethering and also about having a perspective that is beyond that which is in your own city. Mm. And I had that same feeling, which was, I knew, and I told Eli about it, like when we went to South Africa, I have never felt literally, like because I've traveled a little bit as well, I've literally never felt a connection to a place mm. as strongly as I felt mm. what was in Joburg. I felt like mm. someone in in my bloodstream mm. has walked these same roads before. Like it's yeah. that African yeah, magic. Yeah, it, it's it's so I cool. don't know what it is. Like yeah. I felt that same thing even as I was like boy like I feel so connected to like South Africa. Like there's so much it felt like there's so much work mm. that I feel like Mantok might have to do there. I don't know how we're going to take it there, but like mm. I might go maybe in a different capacity. But if it's through Mantok and I pray that it is, I really felt like the energy and the people were mm. so like, I can now go to Zim. I'm I've, really champion yeah, for yeah, Zimbabwe. Yeah, like, like, next up, guys. Yeah, yeah like I, talk to a Zim. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's off camera how to do that. Yeah, we'll yeah. Take it yeah because yeah. like I felt that energy, and because like I was born and raised in Nairobi, yeah. I understand what you're saying in terms of sometimes um, you can be in a city that has a very big ego, and mm. if you acquiesce yourself too much to that ego, you will find that you will not grow. Mm. Um, my friend Alex um, has an analogy that he used just before I went. He, he gave me this analogy, and I challenge anyone to check it out. Apparently, fleas um, can jump. I think nobody's going to check it out. We are not yeah, going yeah, to search with fleas, but no, no, yeah. <laughs> just go ahead, Adele. Please, uh, Adele and I kill her. <laughs> this no, is like fleas. Yeah, yeah, like fleas. Apparently, fleas have mm. a have a thirty. I think it's a it's like a it's a, it's a two meter. Leaping height. Yeah. yeah. Favorite yeah. Favorite Two analogy. meter leaping yeah. height. Yeah. But if you put a flea in a jar mm. for long enough, it'll believe that that's, that's how, two meters. That's that's like exactly how far it can jump. Those few wow. centimeters. That's deep. Like if you release it, it'll still stay jumping, yeah. jumping, jump and it'll never get up to its maximum height. Of what it used to be exactly. able to do. What yeah. it's what it is it's actually able. capable of doing. Ah. So like as that's Ken- deep yeah as i'm Kenyans. going to use that alex yeah. <laughs> yeah as kenyans like just get out of the jar and start to jump because you might find that you can leap slightly mm. higher mm. than kind of what this city is offering you mm. and i hope that like that pan-african perspective that you've come with and yeah. all of the story which we can go on guys mm. for years mm. yeah which we'll probably do after the cameras run off mm. um i hope that guys can look at your life and kind of how you've transcended you know like such difficult challenges such as sexual violence um such difficult challenges such as like a tough youth um tough upbringing when you're younger and you've really like every room you've walked in and i told you you bring such light oh that is so mm. kind yeah like it's Correct. unbelievable adele it's unbelievable so first few minutes guys before we go of me meeting adele she was sitting on a bench and she felt uncomfortable <laughs> okay, no, about just about, my, about sitting on that bench do you know what she decorum. did <laughs> mr mr eli do you know what she did she realized hey this bench is not comfortable mm. this lady sat at the edge of like she stood up and sat at the mm. table mm. and looked at all of us like this uh-huh, tell me more mm. That is and just metaphor. continued to be herself. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. like, so man, yeah. just keep doing that. Don't like, tell oh. that story. <laughs> like, I'm not looking like a, <laughs> yeah. you know, well-behaved lady. You are so, like, you are such yeah. a vibe and yeah. you have such beautiful energy. And I just Thank pray you. that people take yeah. what we've shot here today and they like, mm. learn as much and dissect it as much. Mm. As they can and just learn from yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. My, yeah. Mine, is, mine is just to say, I think that's a perfect analogy of who you are as a person, mm. leaving the bench and then going to sit where you want to sit, right? So, yeah. um, I've definitely felt that energy as well. Um, at the end, we normally tell the guests to give us something to recommend, but we're not going to do that today mm. because I want to recommend them to go and watch Legally Clueless and listen oh, to Legally Oh, that Clueless. is so kind. 100% because then you understand where this mindset comes from, yeah. where this exposure comes from because you've gone and done the work and brought the stories to them. Yeah. So I encourage everybody to go and watch That's that. so kind. Yeah. Um, but Adele, your time is very valuable. So thank you for sharing it with us. Thanks for having me. Yes, for sure. It is really great. Yes. Yes. Question, uh, yeah. Yellow, uh, if you're watching uh-huh. Legally Clueless, where are shades? Yeah. <laughs> yellow is everywhere. I was yeah. told not to wear yellow today. I was like, damn it. Damn it. Yeah. So, yeah. so Adele, just thank you for your time. Thanks for uh, having me. And I yes. think thanks for like having the space to have this these conversations. Yeah. Um, they can get heated, but they have to. They have to. You know what I mean? Brilliant. I love they that. have to get heated yeah. for us to arrive on the other side together. Yeah. And and I genuinely feel like there has been a gap for 
men to see people who look like themselves speaking sense into their world mm. um and it's 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 really necessary and valuable work that you're doing so even in the times where it doesn't make sense like you're saying i want to go to south africa but i don't know how the how is like project management it's like it's very one plus one mm. you've already set an intent that you're going to do it the how will just like kind of like you'll know what you need to do you know what i mean yeah. but now you know a hey, that's where we're going and i even in the moments where it's not making sense like just keep going um things always eventually make sense and happen the way they're meant to happen yeah thank you so much thank you so much oh, that, that we needed yeah. to hear that oh. uh, guys i really hope you've enjoyed this conversation as much as we've enjoyed having it we'll see you next week on mantalk.ke bye bye adela nyangu ladies and gentlemen oh, <laughs>